Hi, I'm Karen McCarthy, and it's time to Karenize. Today's Wednesday when we talk about spiritual health. But before we get into today's, to today's subject, I do want to thank my subscribers. And uh, thank you for your comments, your thumbs up and sharing the video to others. If you haven't subscribed, I would love to have you join our little family. And also, if you know someone who would benefit from this video or any of the videos or would like them, I would love it if you would share. So without further ado, let's get into today's topic. And today I want to talk about God the Father. Uh, that's probably one of the most common names or things that people call God as Father. Um, I'm going to go back a few years when I was meeting with a bunch of teens and young adults in my home, and we did praise and worship and Bible study and things. And one of the first, I guess, lessons you would say that we did was to talk about the Lord's Prayer and what it meant. And I realized before the very first session that the kids that were coming to my home in large part did not associate the word father with something good and loving. They were either um, had been abused, had been abandoned, had had multiple fathers in their homes or in their lives, and they didn't have the kind of relationship that I had grown up with, with a father who was loving and kind and um, just everything a father should be. Uh, he did work a lot. So um, sometimes when you have a father who works a lot, even though you know they, that they love you, you don't um, get that quality time with them. He did the best he could with that, and we, I have a lot of really good memories. But these kids, a lot of them didn't have any memories. They hadn't had a father in their lives or not one that was their father. They had dads and uncles in and out of their lives, um, or they had had really bad experiences with their fathers. So um, let me put this camera up just a little bit. There we go. So I knew that the, the the beginning of the Lord's Prayer, our Father who art in heaven, didn't have the same meaning to them, nor, nor did the rest of the prayer. If you don't have the understanding of who God the Father is because you have a negative experience with your earthly father, you really aren't going to get the impact of the Lord's Prayer or anything in the Bible that talks about how he loves you. So um, that's what we did. We spent the first night just talking about what does God the Father mean? What is a father supposed to be like, you know, compared to what your father was like? Now, no earthly father is perfect, and we never want to expect them to be. But of course, we do expect a father to be there for their children, to love their children, to support their children, to discipline them when necessary, to teach them and model for them what their life should be like. And so we went through all of those kinds of things. What should a father be? And what does God the Father mean? I mean, I know I've heard quite a few people who think that God is this angry, wrathful, vengeful God, which he can be. <laughs> but that's not what he is to us as, his, as our father. Um, he can be angry and vengeful and discipline when necessary, but his discipline is never... Um, harsh. It, it is true discipline, even on earth with our earthly parents should be, um, the purpose should be to stop a negative behavior and teach and model and turn to the appropriate behavior. So any kind of discipline that is very harsh and degrading is not what God intended discipline to be. So his discipline is loving. It can be very firm. I mean, I had to be very firm with my son and with my foster kids sometimes, but hopefully never, never in an unloving manner. Now, was I perfect? No. And did I cross that line? Yeah. But I strive to always show that loving affirmation, even during discipline. So I'm going to read you some verses that have to do with God's love. The first one well, God's love and God, the Father. The first one is Psalm 68, 5, and it says, Father to the fatherless, defender of widows, this is God whose dwelling is holy. So he is a father to the fatherless. Whether I mean, right now, my father is in heaven, so I still have my father God here on earth for me, if that makes sense. Okay, uh, this shows how much he loves us. He captures every tear we shed 
in this bottle that he has for our tears. And that's in Psalm 56, 8. Can you imagine? My bottle has to be pretty big. I have shed a lot of tears in my lifetime. So I, my bottle is huge. Or maybe they compact. I don't know. <laughs> um, in Psalm 46, 1, he says that he is a safe refuge for us so we can flourish. Flourish, flourish. How do you say that word? Anyway. Um uh, let's see. In 1 Corinthians 8, 6, it says we're fun. Oh, I don't even know what that was supposed to be. Oh my goodness. The tongue is tangled. But for us, there is one God, the Father, by whom all things were created and for whom we live. And there is one Lord, Jesus Christ, through whom all things were created and through whom we live. In Matthew 23, 9, it says, And call no man your father on earth, for you have one Father who is in heaven. Now, sure, you can call your father father. That's not quite what that means, but it's saying that he is our supreme father. Um, in, let me find the reference here, Isaiah 63, 16, it says, Surely you are still our father, even if Abraham and Jacob would disown us. In other words, in our lives, if anybody would disown us, if everyone would disown us, Lord, you would still be our father. You are our redeemer from ages past. And Psalm 27.10 says, Even if my father and mother abandon me, the Lord will hold me close. Now, my parents didn't abandon me, but they have passed away, so they're gone. And in some sense, that's abandonment, not of their choice. Um, but God will always be there for me. Uh, we are children of God through faith in Jesus Christ. Galatians 3.26 because we are God's children now, and what we will be has not yet appeared, but we know that when he appears, we shall be like him, because we shall see him as he is. 1 John 3, 2. I'll tell you, these days it feels like that time when we see him is coming close. Um, in Romans eight seventeen, since we are his children, we are his heirs. In fact, together with Christ, we are heirs of God's glory. But if we are to share his glory, we must also share his suffering. That's a whole nother subject. Life on earth isn't guaranteed to be easy just because we're God's children. But he will be with us through that. In Ephesians 1, 5, God decided in advance to adopt us into his own family by bringing us to himself through Christ Jesus. This is what he wanted to do, and it gave him great pleasure. I mean, he chose us. He created us. He chose us. Just a couple more here. Romans 8, 15 you have not received a spirit that makes you fearful slaves. Instead, you received God's spirit when he adopted you as his own children. Now we call him Abba Father. So even the best dad on earth is going to fail us at times. They're human. I mean, we as humans, we're, we never are 100% reliable. I mean, there are just things that happen. But our Heavenly Father is always reliable. He's always loving. And it is his great delight to be the father to the fatherless. So just remember that even if you are alone on this earth, you can turn to God the Father and he will be there for you. He loves you. He cherishes you, which is even deeper than love. And he desires to be your father. If you have not accepted Christ as your savior, he wants you to do that so that he can be your Abba Father. So... I hope that that helps you today and I will talk to you next time.